sense of purpose, dedication, passion, giving back, structure, strength, mindset, whatever noun or adjective you want to use, our next guest exhibits those mentioned and more. I've had the honor in meeting slash training with him. Welcome from Western Australia, James Woodfield Jones. What is up, brother? Ah, thank Thank yes, thank time. you, James. Thank so, you. for those listening it's on the morning. this on this podcast this episode, I have the pleasure to have uh, James Woodfield Jones, who's a black belt jujitsu instructor, boxing, judo, badass, that is in Western Australia, city of Perth. And this is actually my longest episode. My second, my longest prior to this was uh, I, I don't. You probably didn't meet him, James, when you're out here visiting us, but uh, a guy named Mike a Swedish guy. He was the two-time Swedish kickboxing champion. Awesome individual, great human. So he was he was the longest podcast I, or episode I had, but you just beat him by, let's see here, you beat him by 3,804 miles <laughs> and uh, seven hours. So amazing. Yeah, amazing what the internet can do. So, uh, for those that are listening, again, uh, the reason why I have people like James on is, is because James has been able to make a living in doing what he truly enjoys, his passion, his love in life, which also stokes his fire. And he's teaching. He has his own jujitsu academy. You may call it different over there, James. You can cor correct me. But it's called Sustainable Jiu-Jitsu. And James is a, not only an awesome human being, he's a solid individual on the mat. He's well-rounded. He likes to incorporate tools slash weapons as well in his game. That's why I like James. I don't like, I, I'm, you got to round out your game. And uh, James does that. So James, for our audience, our listeners, I'd like to kick it off and start earlier when you were a young man, young lad. And when did you start getting into martial arts? What, what was that catalyst, that spark for you? Oh, okay. Great question. I was, um, I'm originally from the UK and um, my mum and dad, uh, my dad actually got me into the martial arts at about four and a half. So he's actually ex ref wow. uh, Air Force and he did the SAS as well. So he'd always done a lot of uh, combatives and a lot of martial arts and it was never ever pushed on me. It was just more we'd play around and my brother and I, we play around and there, yeah, about four and a half became an absolute obsession. Um, it was like meant to be, is this what I'm here for? And I truly, to this day, almost 46, I still feel that this is what I'm here to do. So mm. yeah, four and a half, I, I started watching Bruce Lee. Bruce Lee was, you know, way back then, all the, all the videos and mm -hmm. say VHSs, because that, that's what they were back then. And I used to play with dad. And uh, I begged mum and dad to sign me up to what was called Show the Cannon back then. That's what I started with. And my brother, he was, I was about four and a half, he'd have been about seven and a half. And I begged him, I said, oh, come on, let's go, let's do this. He wasn't too interested. And I begged, oh. him, begged him. So mum and dad signed us up and then I cried for a week. Because <laughs> I, was, I was scared when we went. Uh, I'm only four and a half. But that week didn't last very long. And then I was obsessed with it. And that's uh, actually how the journey started. So four and a half, and um, I've been doing it ever since. Showed a can, slowly went to Taekwondo, went to karate, went to kickboxing, jiu-jitsu, and then so on and so forth. But at four and a half, I would definitely say obsessed. I'd go in my room and kick and punch. Not in an aggressive way, just wow. loved it. So, and that was where the spark was born. So four and a half, so four, much, and uh, people listening, if there's a little bit of an echo, we have a long distance between us. Um, so you're at four and a half and you have the mindset to go in your room and practice your katas and whatever you're doing, whether it's Taekwondo, karate, I don't know if you're doing Hapkido or any of those, but anyways, you're able to practice it four and a half, bro. Most, most boys at four and a half want to play with Tonka toys or their army men or, uh, yeah. Yeah. I did a bit of that as well, but, um, yeah, no, I just go in my room and practice. I've been there for a good hour and a half. And my mum actually said to me when I was 
you know, four or five ish or so, she said, you're going you're to do something with this in the future. And actually, funny thing, when we, it wasn't funny for mum and dad, but when we moved from England to Australia, um, my first thing was, well, my brother and I said, could we get a pool? That was really the, the number one thing. Uh, when we moved from England to Australia, but it was also, could we kind of sign up for martial arts as soon as we get there? And I think on the plane ride, wow. I must have asked her about 30 times. <laughs> I think mum was about ready to struggle with before we got here. <laughs> but yeah, and that's where it started. And, and I'm uh, more enthusiastic and passionate about it now, even more so. Every year gets better. That's, uh, I just love it. That is really. unique. And I, I, I think yeah. you, that's some, that, that's, there's a difference there because a lot of guys burn out as they get older, right? Um, you were so unique as a little kid a little toddler to to have that passion and to keep it going and you left your homeland in england and you went to australia and most kids are worried about you know no friends i'm sure you probably had a little of that but or maybe you were too young enough to to get into that mindset but your focus was on trying to find a place to train that's that's sick that's awesome wow do you know what's interesting, Mike, is I really do, and that's what I, you know, promote now, is I believe that we, we okay. actually came over here, um, I was 10, we came over, stayed for three months, what didn't work out, you know, it was very different, so we went home and then they came back at 11, so not, not too much uh, space there, but at 10 years old I came over and it was different, you know, because we came over from a different country and it was hot and palm trees and houses were different and we didn't know anybody and I had to go to primary school and my brother had to go to high school so we couldn't even go to school together but I look back now at you know almost 46 and I look back and I think wow you know I believe martial arts have really set me up in confidence wise physically mentally emotionally and made me feel confident to do what I um to, to, to come over to another country and sort of integrate and fit in amongst other things the beautiful parents my brothers are great and we had some uh, family here but i really do put that down to martial arts because it's the most embodied thing you can do as i said physically mentally emotionally what's more powerful than feeling powerful and confident and i really do put martial arts down to down to that as long as, as, well as epic i couldn't have said any better regarding martial arts that what a Okay, so from one martial artist, black belt to another, um, obviously this is, we don't even have to talk about this, but for our audience, let, let's delve into it a little bit. You, to, again, that mindset, the, the, the presence of mind at such a young age, even 11, 12, 15, whatever, you're so far ahead of the game of most kids as far as self-defense and building up that confidence and that inner that inner strength, which in turn gives you outward peace, right? Because you're confident. Yeah. So you're, you're confident in what, in who you are and what you're doing. And I agree that that helps alleviate some stress, some anxiety when you go to a foreign country, a foreign land, when you're an outsider, when you don't know anybody to be able to re to rely back to your foundation, your core, your inner strength of who you are. That's, that's, that's just goes yards out. That's awesome. Wow. Very cool. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And I, and I really do. That's, that's like I said, I want to promote that to the younger generation, the older, it doesn't mm -hmm. really matter. It really does give you, it's, it's life. For me, it is, and I know it is for yourself. It is. It's a, what's better than feeling powerful, but people mis can misunderstand it to be, oh, you know, it's violent and you are beating people up. No, but on the flip side of it, because you're capable of this, then you are become a better right. person. I'm more than happy to be nicer. I don't want to beat anyone up unless you try to hurt me and I'll defend myself. But I want to use it for good. And what I see in this today's world. I'm sure you do as well, Mike, because you see a lot of people with unconfidence. But I have a podcast okay. as well, and it's called Ordinary or Extraordinary. Which one you want to be? We're all ordinary, we're all extraordinary, but how are you going to be, get to what you want to be is embody yourself. The best way to embody yourself to feel powerful is evolution. 
to feel like this. And that is my number one thing, and that's what I aim to to pass on. Yeah, there, the there you go. Well, you kind of answered. I, I mentioned at the the beginning intro, sense of purpose, uh, the uh, the noun sense of purpose, and you just you just totally explained your sense of purpose, and and I love that. I I as well love giving back. I enjoy giving back and helping good people uh, feel better about themselves in any way I can, and how to have that inner strength, which gives them the, that outward peace that where they can walk confidently. And, and you're right. The, the people that are kind of ignorant, if you will, or aren't educated or just, they don't know. They think, Oh, martial arts trying to be a bad guy. No, dude, you don't even know the journey, brother. It's, that's not, that's not it at all. And, uh, yeah, it's definitely helped me as well to get through some tough times. And, um, you know, and obviously I have a 30 year career in various martial arts, a lot of pain, a lot of pain. I've been, I, I mean, there is some pain involved and some, and some setbacks and injuries, but that made me mentally tough or stronger, if you will. And when I go through issues like this migraine crap that I'm dealing with right now, I just relate it back to, well, yeah, this is pretty rough, but how bad is it compared to when I broke my back or, you know, almost lost my arm in a car accident or, or the dude in martial arts broke my nose and chipped my teeth. You know, you just, I don't know. It's just that thing you and I can relate to. Maybe people listening can't understand that, but obviously the, 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 the real people, the real warriors in the world, the, like you mentioned, your dad's SAS, that's, that's amazing. So um, the real world warriors totally understand what we're talking about. So that's, that's amazing. Absolutely. It's about adaptation, isn't it? Resilience, adapting, adapting, adapting. Right. So I say to people on the mats, you're constantly adapting. And you're constantly also feeling your emotions. And I say to people, if you don't feel your emotions, how are you going to get over them and how are you going to learn to deal with them? Now, of course, there's a, a certain way to help people do that. It's not by beating them up. It's by pressuring them and challenging mm -hmm. them, but for lack of a better word, inoculating them. So if their level's here, you go to here and and just build them up. Not too much, not too little, but in the end, you can actually give a lot of pressure to people and they're fine. And that's what I've seen over the years. You know, I've seen people who didn't want to go for that job or scared to have the children or scared to ask the girl out or whatever it is. And then uh, six months later, a year later, all of the above. And they're beautiful. And, that's, and I love that. And in turn, if you stick around long enough, learning how to defend yourself, course easy easy if you do it a, on a consistent basis mm -hmm. it's all the other back stuff but they actually do go hand in hand the art and the self-protection you have to have the extreme so you can have the, the other uh, one doesn't come without the other i think uh, there's a famous gentleman in america his name jordan peterson he said a violent person is a is a better person or a he's person canadian capable of violence. i'm sorry is a bit of this. Yeah. No, no, no. Say, hey, same continent. Canadian. It's all good. Well, I, I thought, sorry. no, <laughs> ignorant me. I thought he was American off the bat. Maybe how, how silly was I to think, oh, he's a bright guy. He's an American. <laughs> what a joke. Uh, no, he's, he, he, he's up north, great white north, Canada. And uh, you're right. He's the guy's, the guy's awesome. And he's, he's had a lot of interesting takes as far as what's going on right now with Canada and their whole problem. So, um, which, which, what, which this segues into, I want to rewind a little bit. So you, you graduated high school in Australia, correct? And, and so I'm sure you were doing martial yes. arts through that whole career and whatnot did, or go, while you're attending school, when did you, I, I believe you did some, some, some cage type fights as well, but when did you get into, I want to run a school. I want to teach people jujitsu and other martial arts. I would have been about wow. early 20s. Um, I've done actually, I've done so many jobs to get into. It was constant training. So whether I was coaching or not, I was always training. Um, but I got into, uh, I, I had a, I was a postie. So you actually a postman around here on, on motorbikes delivering. You know, it was a bit of a giggle, but I actually did that for 10 years and I actually did other jobs on top of that. To, so I could start early and finish early and then I could go coach, obviously train and then coach. 
And I slowly built it up and I actually started with half a gym. Because, you know, we started with a young family and all we were expecting a young family and buying homes and, you know, as life goes. So I started with half a gym. We went half with another gentleman and I started to coach and, and just build it up slowly. And then uh, slowly into full time, but it wasn't a quick thing. It certainly wasn't. I just opened up a gym one day and started coaching. I was coaching in parks. I was coaching in garages. I was coaching all over the place. And sometimes it was for $10, sometimes for $20, whatever it was. But I just wanted to share it. I knew that I had a gift to share and, and I loved it. And I also love the people that I do it with. I am select, I would, I would help anybody, but obviously they have to be with the mindset to want to, you know, dedicate to training. And, uh, you know, whether you serve them for three months or you serve them for a lifetime, it's nice to help people, but it was very, uh, very slow process and slowly building it up. And I think this is my fourth studio I'm in now. Um, rented, rented, slowly bought, uh, purchased. Oh, fan and, fantastic. Uh, own the studio. Well, well the bank owns the studio. <laughs> but that's how it started. And it was a, very, it was a slow process and, you know, slow building. But I also run my studio a little bit different, Mike. I don't have uh, masses of people in there. I have a lot of clients, but I work a lot with privately and small groups. Um, I used to do the big class thing, but I don't, uh, it doesn't, doesn't suit me very well because you don't tend to know people. I don't have a problem with it. I'll certainly do a big seminar or a big workshop, but I do like to work uh, personally uh, client with the people. One of my oh, longest clients for you. is almost 25 years. Awesome. Yeah. So that was, um, that's, uh, it's beautiful. Uh, and he's one, of, uh, yeah, he's, uh, he's one of my black belts now. And they're uh, lovely. You know, they're, all my clients are not just, they're not clients there. Money's money, business is business. So these were right. So well, wow. Friends. Sounds like it they're sounds like your first people. black belt. That guy was training with you almost since the big, well, close to when you got done with high school, right? And got on your journey. And yeah, well, he, yeah, yeah. He was in my first studio. Him and a handful of others, and uh, still oh, today. That's he's awesome. Now 60. Awesome, bravo. So. <laughs> it is. It's, it's, it's beautiful. Thank you very much, mate. But I will tell you this, uh, Mike, uh, when I was there, uh, you know, I, I don't focus on the negative. I always focus on the positive, but there is a little negative mindsets out there. And I remember in the post office, and I was in there for about 10 years, mate, and it was good. It served the purpose, but there was a lot of negativity in there. And I remember when I first started, and they said, oh, you know, you, you're here now. You're here for life. You've been a post. And I said, no, no, no. I have a purpose. I'm here until I can get my gym. Or oh, you won't be able to do that, mate. A lot of hard work. And this wasn't just the people at the work. This was people outside and lots of lots of different uh, people. And I said no. But I've never ever been concerned about that because I know I know in my mind what I meant to be. Uh, you know the purpose again. So mm -hmm. I'll be honest. It did irritate me a little bit sometimes. <laughs> but uh, no, it never changed my path. It never never made me waver. It won't, nothing will, because this is what I'm going to do. So hey, you just continues. nailed it on the head. Uh, through my course of my martial arts, and I'm no big deal, but I, I have a passion for it and love it. But yeah, tons of detractors, tons of negative people. I, I had I had one guy come up to me. He was supposedly was a good, as you guys say, mate, good mate, good bro of mine. And he was saying, hey, you, you do too much jujitsu. You need to spend more time with your wife. And I just went... What the fuck did you? I said fuck, didn't say the f word. I said, "What the fuck did you just say to me?" And it's like my fist was, my hand was clenching, and I was about. To, I, I wanted to just. Here's in my mind what I did, and like what I say a New York second. I wanted, or you might say a a Perth or or a Sydney second. I wanted to just freaking upper shot, follow with an elbow, downward elbow, get him in a in a in a underhook. Get him in a, you know, in a, in a freaking, oh, I just wanted to you know, get, wrap his neck and I wanted to snap him on my leg and throw him to the ground. That's like the intensity I can get. So when people are listening, yeah, I'm being a little dramatic, but, um, you and I have that passion where we're like the 2%. 
we're, if we believe in something and we believe it's a positive thing and it's going to make you a better man, it's going to improve the people around you, especially your family, because you're happy, you enjoy your life, you're putting out a positive vibe, then who the hell are you to detract from my goals? And so I'm the same. I steamroll anyone that tries to get in my way for my goals, as long as it's, it's for a positive and it's for the better can't man you just got my fire going i can't stand people that do that so i'm with you 100 <laughs> percent. And, uh, and i think you're right now you know there's times that i felt like doing the same thing as, as you said um but i think you'll always have people like that i saw something on social media a long time ago and i said um, don't worry if someone yeah. doesn't like you because yeah, most people don't like themselves anyway <laughs> And I thought now, yeah. if you're not if you're not passionate and you're not uh, driven, and maybe you feel like you can't achieve it, then you're going to just dampen everybody else's fire. But you've also got people, and I really work hard to surround myself with people who lift you. So we're all batteries for each other. We're all charging each other. And, and I would say some people, you know, scratch the surface, and they're they're all right. They're all right. They just need a little bit of help because they've been in such a negative environment. And then there's other people who can scratch as much as you want. You're just not going to make a difference. And as much as you would like to snap them over your, your kneecap, you just say, mate, whatever. And I just see you gone. And, then that, and that's something I've done in the past and perhaps something I'll do in the future if I need to. But it's not from a, it's not from a, a bad place. It's more from if you, someone's not lighting your fire, you need to remove that person. I said, mm -hmm. uh, yes. have you ever heard of the theory of the crabs in a bucket there, Mike? Yes. You knew about crabs in a bucket? It took me three <laughs> hours to catch some crabs to show my boys when they were little down the beach. So I could show them, you know, when one of the crab yes. climbs out, all the others pull it back in. And I said, that's kind of what people are like. So this is, this is not me. If you tell me you want to do something, right. I'm right behind you. I'm with you because I've got the same mindset. So I think what's important in life is to actually surround yourself with the like-minded people, bearing in mind that some people need a little bit more lift than others. I mean, that's cool. I'm happy to do that. Uh, but amen. If dragging you down. Amen. And, and you know, I don't, Fact. I use, I, yeah, I do what you do. I pretty much laugh people off and just go, Hey man, whatever. Uh, it's not worth wasting my, especially as I get older, I've learned to control my temper, if you will, a little better, but when you're young, and I think that example where that guy said, I need to spend more time with my wife, I think I was 28. And, you know, you when you're 28 and you're training every day and you're sparring and fighting and, and surfing and doing all your fun stuff. And, yeah, obviously spend time with your wife, too. You just like and, and then and then he's trying to tell you how to treat your wife. That's just like, dude, you, you overstep so many boundaries, bro. I, I need to check you out. But. um Yeah, he's probably enough time with his wife, mate, after he's telling you. Yeah, I think, I think, so I think your wife would be happy for you to um, to come down and see you surfing and see you training and picking you up from the pub at, or 3 a.m. in the morning, give her a call to pick you up from hanging out drunk. Absolutely. James, you nailed it, brother. He, he became an alcoholic and he napalmed his, as I say, napalm, destroyed the bridges of his family and abandoned his kids. He's a train wreck. So, um, and, and if you're listening, I'll leave your name out of this. If you're listening, yeah, I'm calling you out and get your life straight. So, um, you never abandon your family. Anyways, that's a different topic, <laughs> but you're right. You're, you're, you're right. I, uh, most people, I just go, Hey, my dad <laughs> taught me cause I've been in sales my whole life. My dad taught me some will, some won't, and some, you got to work for it, you know? So, so, so there are going to be those that you think you can, that there's probably some that you thought, Oh, this person's going to be great. To, I can bring in and train them and mold them and be a great training person for me. And it just doesn't pan out. And then for whatever reason, cause the way your mind was when you were raised as a kid into an adult, maybe you look at someone else and they're not going to, they won't pan out and they're your best student, you know? And you're like, wow, how did that work? So yeah, I never, I, I treat everybody like a black belt unless yes. they prove me otherwise. So Everybody I interact with, I treat them with respect. I treat them as a black belt until they prove me otherwise, and then I'll go from there and you know switch it. So, 
Be- beautiful. I, I say to people, you know, I give uh, everybody gets a hundred percent. If someone does something wrong or does wrong by you, or you know they need to be removed, then they'll be removed. But the next person doesn't get twenty percent because they, the other person burnt you. The other person, the next person gets a hundred percent. Well, it's the same thing. You know, and I think that's, and again, that's that resilience, that's adaptation that you actually learn through the martial arts, because that's what your, that's what life is. It's a constant series of detours and roadblocks and uphill and downhill. But man, it's just, you know, you just keep adapting, keep adapting. Like we say, you know, you get stuck under you. Right. Oh, can't just stop. I gotta adapt. You know, relax, right. take it easy. And we work through it, and, and you know, that's the. That's with the resilience that you build over so many years of doing this. Absolutely. So, so let's thing. touch up. I want to touch upon the last couple of years with yeah. COVID. Uh, a lot of a lot of dojos, academies, gyms, and mm-hmm. whether it's martial arts or just gyms, you know, whatever physical locations for people to get in shape, shut down. People lost their businesses, their livelihoods. Uh, at least here in the States, I, I know you guys are on a whole nother level with COVID than, than some other countries. Um, maybe you can dispel some of those rumors or, st- or what we think we hear out there, but how have you been able to keep your career in tow and functioning during this whole pandemic, which has been over two years? Yeah, it's been an awful long time, and it's been an mm. extraordinary event. Yeah, uh, we know we'll say no, we'll say no more. But um, it's been very strange. Conditions. But again, this is again where the adaptation and the resilience comes in. It's been you know very very important. And um, we were very lucky here in Perth, Western Australia, because we shut the borders, so we actually didn't get a lot of it come in. We were actually quite isolated. <laughs> It's the internet and the, the long the long distance, but we're quite isolated. We're on the, very much the other side of, of Australia. So Sydney, Melbourne and other areas got hit far worse than us. So they had far more lockdowns than us. And we actually opened our borders to everybody, international and uh, the other side of Australia in March the 3rd. So we do have cases here. We do, it has come in, but we've been super lucky here. Um, But there was a a period of time, I think in 2020, early, when I had to shut the studio for about three months. And I'll be honest with you, Mm -hmm. I pretty much almost had about a meltdown because, you know, one, it's my livelihood and this is what pays my bills. Uh, Two, it's my passion. And uh, briefly, though, briefly, for a week or so, I was angry, if I was honest, angry, frustrated, you know, because you've got other places open like McDonald's and... And all these other places, hmm, how come, uh, mm-hmm. this, you have to shut this, we have to shut this. But that's another story. But in all in all, okay, because also very lucky that I run private clients and not so much a group of 70 to 80 people on the mats. That would have been a problem. I think that would have been a big problem because then it would have been a struggle with, you know, people's mindsets and worry about getting COVID, uh, worry about obviously they can't have 80 people. So working privately with people and people that uh, know me and are people of pretty conscious mind, um, I've been very lucky. Um, so I'm very glad that I set my business up. I set my business up privately in a small group based for uh, many reasons, for attention, for safety, for excellence, for the individual. But it turns out in this day and age, worked out to be probably one of the best things I could have done. Um, because then I'll work with privately. And we we'll, we'll always have a rule co- before COVID, after COVID and during. If you don't feel very well, just let me know. No problems. We'll reschedule for next week. I'll see you next week. So common sense comes into it a lot. Uh, but we know common sense is not common. But with my clients, I have a great bunch of people and everybody's pretty switched on. So for me, very lucky. But I did see um, some people over here. They're still going, which is good because we didn't get hit that hard, but I didn't see other people over at the other side of Australia and, of, of course, over the over the world. Very sad, you know, and it's disrupted their business and especially when possibly could have been avoided in some ways if you just used a bit more common sense. But, you know, we, we respect what it is, but I think, uh, you know, it could be handled 
uh, maybe differently, but also people's mindset could be handled differently because once you start panicking, you start thinking, I mean, when it first started, I think most people thought that, geez, man, I think it's going to wipe out everybody. So then it causes this mass hysteria. Then people not only don't want to train, but they don't want to go out anywhere. Mm. And then you look at the levels of anxiety and depression in people, and it starts to skyrocket. Now, people were struggling before this, and they'll struggle after this, but this has been even worse for some people. Um, and again, I'm very lucky that I don't, I don't feel like that. I feel there's always a positive to it. There's always something that's going to come out of it. It's going to be positive. And I even think to this day now there might, but there is a positive of it. Maybe it's given people, and with respect to the people, I don't mean in their business, but maybe just in their lifestyle and how they think of things, maybe it's a positive thing to think of things in a different way. Maybe a, a little bit more gratitude for the things that you had before and the things that you can do before. Um, and and nothing's, nothing's going to be taken away. No one's going to control your mind unless you let them. No one will ever get into your head unless you let them. You let it, and then that's it. Now you're off on a tangent. Uh, another cool thing I saw on social media is a little fishing boat. And it was in this big sea, and it said, uh, no amount of water mm. will sink this boat unless the, the boat lets the water in. And that's kind of like your head. So, But how do you keep that resilience of mindset for, for it? Training. Training. Even when I didn't have my studio open for three months, uh, I was training two, three times a day in my garage. I'm lucky my boys train, my wife trains. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, that's hey, awesome. guess what, what we well, train. <laughs> good for you, James. Very so cool. Very so speaking of that, so you have a wife and two boys. Very cool. So, uh, I, and I believe I've seen yes. some videos or at least pictures with your wife in the social media shots when you're promoting your 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 plate, your location, sustainable jujitsu. So uh, your wife, uh, she, is she, is she, does she train with you? I mean, obviously she trains with you, but is she like regimented where she's trying to get a higher belt and all that stuff? Or is she just going to keep the rust off, keep the self-defense going? Both. Yeah, no, she's training. For, she's a blue belt, currently a blue belt. And we've taken, obviously, you know, uh, um, she's had some injuries with her back over the years. Um, so it's taken a long while for us to get onto the mats. But, you know, her back is, is uh, always a little bit testy, but, you know, she pushes through wicked mindset. She's a, if there's anyone complaining, I right. complain, I get the sniffles. <laughs> she doesn't complain. So, she's, yeah, she's consistent, and she got a, one of her best friends that she trains with, and they come in and they train twice a week. And obviously, number one, it's for fun, and it's for movement, and it's for the mind and the body, but also, absolutely. Um, skill set, you know, I think the misunderstanding for everybody there is that if you're training for, if you're just training for fun and you're not competing and you're not doing this or that, then what are you training for? I said, well, you're training for yourself, right? So you feel really good. And Nikki trains for that. 99% of my clients, I do have clients that compete, have competed and want to compete, but 90%, 99% of my clients want to just have fun. And Nikki's one of those. And that doesn't mean it's not functional, though. Because as you know there, Mike, the long-time martial artist, if you stick around long enough and train uh, for long enough, uh, part of the analogy, but kicking ass is easy, right? Right. It's hard. It's, uh, yeah, I, I mean, you're, you're speaking to one of those. I wasn't really big tournament guy. I did a few, but I was, as a, as a, a younger guy, guy compared to my friends i was already married raising kids i had two jobs i could not afford to do a tournament and get injured i i, I just couldn't and some of my coaches would get pissed off they'd be like you need to do the tournament we need you know we could we need you know it's not that they needed me but they wanted me to help their school and i'm like hey bro you don't live in my house you don't you don't keep the paper down. You don't pay the bills. You don't do this. I, I can't afford to get injured because at the tournament, we're trying to go for each other's arms and necks and ankles and knees and, and uh, put that up on a wall as a trophy. Okay. That's fine. But I, I just couldn't afford to do that. So, and the other thing was, is I was really passionate about surfing too. So what free time I had away from the mat, I wanted to be in the water and, and also in the mountains. So I, I was this guy that loved, martial arts surfing and and skiing snow skiing and um 
So what free time I, and then, you know, of your family and businesses. So you got to really be careful with your time. So, yeah. Um, so I'm one of those guys that was hardcore in martial arts, but wasn't a hardcore jujitsu tournament guy. Um, and that's okay. That's fine. Everyone finds their place, but that kept me a better, I, I was, like you said, a happy person. I was treating people well. I was a good, try to be a good human and, and, uh, and then keep my goals going. So I don't know if I'm rambling, but I agree with you a hundred percent on that. Absolutely. Yeah, no, mate, you, you're absolutely right. I think, you know, I've competed, like I said, I did some, uh, some MMA fights and, and uh, jiu-jitsu and I was in boxing gyms for a good 10 years. I was in pro and amateur boxing gyms. Uh, I didn't compete in boxing, but I was competing weekly in the in the ring, right. probably more harder than it was in the, in the fight. But, it, you know, that was good and it taught me a lesson. And, and But I, the more holistic I got about training, better I actually got. So for a good decade plus, it was all about fire, more fire, more spa, more roll. And it was good. I learned something. Then, but the more I went, you know what? I'm just going to get hit stick. Actually, you know, my first gym there, we had, <clears throat> we had wars in the gym. We were the first people in Perth to have a cage. And a cage um, had no padding on it. It was purpose built. And, it was great. And we didn't really have it for cage fighting. We had it because a lot of us work security. Right. So we could use it against the wall and get pinned against things. And right. again, it was fun, but we did, it was pretty hardcore. We were fighting six days a week for sure. But I remember being in the, the sink with my wife, we were doing the dishes. <clears throat> and this is prior to the boys. Oh, and then we just actually not long had Hunter. And I was like, I don't think I can carry on doing what I'm doing and how I'm doing it. Also, want to make a difference to people. My, my first gym had camo walls and old rusty weights in the corner, and, and it was cool for the time. And then I said, uh, "Right, this is how the gym's going to go. I want to be more, make a difference to people. Take nothing away from the functionality; actually, it'll get better, but give it more of a holistic side." So I did, and I stood up in the gym on a Monday night and I said, "This is where the gym's going. Those who would like to stay, stay. Those who would like to leave, leave." And I'll be honest with you, in all the meatheads that I would have asked mm-hmm. to leave, they all left anyway. They were like soft. I'm like, okay. And I was left with a small point, uh, amount of people. And then I said, it's only going to be good people and it will be for the right reasons. Functionality, 100%. And that's what I went forth and that was, never changed. And so I don't push people into competing. I sort of don't, I don't, certainly don't hold them back. I would um, help them if they wanted to. When I have guys, I have my guy Jay, who's uh, one of my black belts. He helps the guys get ready for it if they want to get ready for it. My focus is individuals who want to be better people and self-defense um, because I think that's super important, as we said before. So, yeah, um, the holistic view is the far better way because it's a lifetime. As you said, I've got 99% of my clients that they can't be getting hurt and they don't come in to mm. compete. They're competing all day, every day at their job. Mm-hmm. They're racing to work, looking for the better job, competing. I don't want to do that when they come into the gym. They want to come in and learn, and, and it's about them. Perfect. I, I, I wish you weren't so far away. I, I would love to have you as a training partner over here in California, or if, obviously if I was over your way, it would be awesome. Um, I agree with you, and I mentioned earlier about how your wife, if she's doing jets, to eventually have a goal of getting a higher belt someday. But as you know, this journey, we don't, we don't do it to – Yes, that I had a goal of becoming a black belt, but my journey was I'm not worried about the belt. That will come someday. I mean, I was a brown belt for f- I was a brown belt for five years. Yes, and my coach at the time didn't even want to give me a black belt. All these Brazilian mm-hmm. guys came up and they're like, "Yeah, Mike, it's time." But I wasn't worried. I, yeah, that was my goal, but. During that whole journey, I wasn't concerned about, I got to get that next belt. We're not doing that. We're just trying to get better every day. And then if you're good enough, then maybe you'll get a belt. But yeah, we're not there for the belt. Uh, I love the whole self-defense aspect. That's what I'm down for. You know, I have a a little side business where it's SASDEF, acronym self-defense, situational awareness, self-defense. And all about your situational awareness and your self-defense. And uh, it's all about realistic scenario based training this is no sport it's realistic stuff and we we use what works discard what doesn't and go from there and obviously the first thing is to try to avoid things and not get into it but if god forbid you can't 
talk, walk, hear your way out of things, then you do what you can limited and get out of there. But um, that, that's great, that, James, that you're doing all that for your clients. That, that's awesome. They're very lucky to have you. That's, that's great. Well, thank you very much, Ray. Thank you. It's a pleasure. You know, and they're beautiful people. And yeah, that's, like I said before, from day dot, from four and a half, that's, that's, this is, this is that, me. It's what I'm here to do. And I'm going to do it until I'm 90, everything willing. So <laughs> that's, the, that's the plan. But, you know, I think, you, like you said, your self-defense, because we're talking about the confidence, and there's a clip on YouTube with um, uh, Hannah Gracie, and he says, you don't get confidence from scoring a point. You get confidence from saying, you know, if someone... Biggest, smaller, doesn't really matter. How's it going? You know how to handle it. But that's the direct link to the, the art side of it for the, being a better person, for being a confidence mm-hmm. person. Because that's how you're going to get the confidence from reality. You know, you know what? This actually works. And, and I, know you, I know you know Mike, and I know also you're going to know what works when if you go berserk, right? and the guy doesn't have to be another jiu-jitsu practitioner, doesn't have to be a kickboxer, it's just a lunatic with one head, two arms, and two legs, and you add a cocktail of drugs and psychosis and whatever goes to it, and then you're going to see what works and what doesn't work. So there's only two ranges, right? Out or in. And if you're in, you're getting glad rats. There'll be no spinning, there'll be no yeah. twisting, there'll be no space. You're just going to get glad rats. Adaptation, yes, but it's very, very simple. Um, but also need to, needs to be shared because I think. Uh, as much as everything grows, it needs to be keep on it. I, Make sure I it doesn't agree. die. So very, very when important. you moved as a kid, are your so your parents they they stayed in Australia as and and you were raised. Did they ever go back to England or everyone you just formed everything there in Australia? So we actually came over when I was ten. Like I said, uh, bingo. Mate, not only did I cry for a week when I went to martial arts when I was four and a half, I, I was 10, and I, made, I cried for a week when it came over here. I, I didn't like it. It was, all, it was very weird. You know, I said it was hot. The house was different. And we went to a completely different area to where we are now. We're a little bit more north. We, so we've, um, my home where I awesome. sit now is five minutes walk down the beach. So we're very lucky in this, in this area. We've worked hard to be here, but... We came into somewhere that was a little bit different, a little, a little different area. So we were thinking, what oh, is this Australia? So we stayed for three months and then we went back to England. We stayed there for about three to four months and then we came back and we came up north of the river. So then we were in a different area and I thought, oh, this Australia's actually all right. So we have actually since been back. I do seminars over ah. in the UK. We've got family in the UK, so we do go back and forth. And I love the UK. I'll always be English yeah. as much as I'll be Australian as well. I love Australia. But England is So do you have dual do you have dual citizenship? Cold. <laughs> ah, okay. All right. Very cool. Very cool. Do, yes. So now the town I'm looking at my <laughs> sorry, go ahead. So very cool. Yeah, no, that's very that's cool. Okay. Um, you know, so very very now lucky. you're in Perth, but you're in a, a town I think maybe just a little bit within Perth, is it called Joondaloop? Is that how you pronounce it? Joondalup. Joondalup. Okay. Uh, Joondalup, yeah, yeah. Okay. That's why it's Yeah, I've never, I've yeah. never had the opportunity to go over there, but uh, when this whole COVID thing calms, calms down, it'd be really neat to cruise over that way and see you at your academy and your school and, and uh, do some training. That'd be cool. Mate, you're... You're more than welcome. I had a great time when we met and we trained in LA. And you know, like I resonated with you instantly because I know you were, um, you came across as a, someone obviously intelligent in themselves, but intelligent on the mats. And I'm, I'm massive on that. You're not worried about someone. Uh, it's not the, it's not the physical act. It's not about being scared mm-hmm. or worried. It's more about being intelligent. You go, mate. Listen, I don't want to be getting hurt. Let me know if we're fighting, right. I'll fight you, but if we're, let's just play. But I can tell you that straight away, and this, uh, it's good. And, and, you know, we're talking about the situation with your migraines. I'd love to love to be there to help you because there is a way you can train, have fun, get really good, and be, you know, kick ass if you want to call it that. But you don't need to train like a fool. You can train smart, and you, and yeah, you no. already have that. I can tell that as yeah. soon as we go on. 
Thank, thank you. Um, yeah, and nowadays, I, I mean, I have been for years, but I, I, I've been doing Filipino combatives for, geez, 22 years. And uh, it's like even when guys were beating me on the mat, I was still thinking, well, my blade would be deployed. First of all, I wouldn't want to go to the ground, you know, you know, in a real fight. You don't want to go to the ground as much as we love jujitsu. But second of all, I'm like, well, my blade would be hitting his femoral here and his mid thyroid there and his heart thrust there. And, you know, so I'm thinking all these <laughs> these templates on the human anatomy and the guy that thinks he's kicking my butt, maybe jujitsu wise. OK, fine. But he has no idea that I'm thinking this is what I'm going to do in real life. And uh, but, you know, you, you just keep that to yourself. And, and uh, you know, so it's it's like it, it's the feeder or receiver mentality that we say in Sayak Kali. And these guys are amazing. It's an amazing system that I've been fortunate to train in. And sometimes the ultimate feeder is letting the receiver think they're the feeder when, in fact, you are. And you're actually controlling. You're, so. Oh, Absolutely, absolutely. Mark, I may say and add to that as well. And this is something that's really important to me, and I know you're a, you're a specialist in this field with the, with the blade. I've, I've uh, you know played with blade for twenty five years, uh, more on the defensive side, not on me deploying it. So like blade on blade, I, uh, it's not my <coughs> I, not my knowledge, but defending it. And this is one thing that I always say with my program there, Mike. Is <coughs> we said there's two ranges in the fighters and they stand mm -hmm. up. Uh, sorry, outside and in, in, inside. You've got to go through the middle and you've got to come out and go through it, but it's out or you're in. So I say, you know, from a, from a grappling point of view, you don't have to be rolling around on the floor. You're very skilled. As soon as we touch, it's jujitsu because we're, we're connected. So I can put you up against the wall, lean you on the wall, put you against the car. I don't have to go to the ground. My jujitsu, my skill and control, contact is going to come into play. So that being said, uh, uh, this is a massive one. And you're going to see some videos this year where I've got some big plans to put some stuff out. My thing is, so there's a, there, we know that there is a point that you're going to have to go hands-on. You know, option scenario where you leave or you have to strike, uh, whatever it is, mix it up. But sooner or later, you're going to have to go uh, hands-on. So I always say to my clients, your number one rule is I already expect you to have something. So your number one rule is make sure you know where those arms go at all times. And uh, over the years, I've seen lots of people, some people do self-defense, some people don't. From the jiu-jitsu perspective, I think it's all a necessity. But you go, nobody even looks at that. And I've been looking at that since day dot. And like, that would be my first thing because I did work security. And, you know, you go grab someone, you don't know who they are. You're dressed with a nice shirt on and jeans on. I have no idea what you have, so I'd already expect to have it. And my dad did say to me when I was very little, he said, you know, the best weapon you can have is a pen. He says, a pen is a knife. And he goes, and you can't, you know, it's everyone, most people could have a pen. You know, you're working out in sales and whatnot, you've got to pen. But not to be paranoid about it, but to be aware of it. So you got two arms, two legs, and a, and a head. I'd be very aware where those hands go. They're the things that will stab you, shoot you, pinch you, punch you, scratch you, and do jujitsu on me if you know what you're doing. Absolutely. So, so really yes, yeah, we, we call it your, your – you mentioned in and out. We call it your reactionary gap, right? So you have your, you have your space and your gaps. And yes. your reactionary gap is now we're within it, but you're correct. They, what, what I think when I started jujitsu with the Gracies back in November, 92, um, they were saying back then that 96% of all fights end up in some sort of grappling situation. And you just defined it perfectly. You don't have to go to the ground. It's once I got a hold of you, it's grappling. Now, you can you can switch that right around where it's not grappling and use your yes. stand up skills, right? Or you have so called tools. I might pull out a screwdriver or a pen or a pencil or a blade or a gun. We have quite a few guns here in the U.S. So, um, or, or you know, or, or whatever. Um, you know, over here, our training group we carry what we call tools, and or what we call equalizers, and it even becomes more prevalent as you get older and dealing with some injuries but you know unfortunately most confrontations are or what we call mass attack multiple attackers and you better know how to you better know how to deal with multiple aggressors that are coming mm. after to barbecue you 
because uh, it's usually not a one-on-one -on -one situation. And I and and I, I don't know if you knew this, but I, I did, and I still do on the side, private executive protection on the side. And I haven't, I, I, you know, I was in quite a few fights when I was younger, real fights, but I never was, fortunately, I never had a problem doing executive protection because I was fortunate with my training, whether it was being as a business owner and a father, but then also through the martial art life and then being trained properly in executive protection. It's, that is not a hands-on thing. You know how to get away with it. But yeah, the bar life and the other club life, that's a different thing. Um, I, I mentioned Mike. Sweet, We called him Swedish Mike, Big Mike, who moved back to Sweden, the two-time uh, Swedish champion kickboxer, amazing human. Um, he did some gnarly stuff at some clubs. It got pretty crazy. But um, yeah, it, it's it's all fascinating. So that's why I love having people like yourself on, James. It's I, I find it so interesting to hear your stories, your life, and then present that to people listening because those that are listening, if you can glean some information and learn from it, it might speed up your decision process as far as, yeah, I do want to learn jujitsu or yeah, I do want to, maybe I need to talk to Gene. Maybe there's someone in Australia right now that maybe hear this someday. And then they find out about you and like, Oh, that's the dude I heard on the, on the internet or on the, uh, the podcast. And yeah, I want to learn from him. So I'm just always about giving back to good people. And, and cause I was always that person, you know, I'm a first generation martial artist. My parents didn't do that. My great grandparents didn't do, they served, they were in the military, but they weren't passionate about martial arts like I was. So I had to go out and learn it myself. I had to find things on my own. And you know that sometimes that's good. Sometimes it's not so good. So whatever. No, mate, you, you know, you spot on. And that's my, that's my mission, mate. This, this year, and especially I had seminars in oh. 2020 and I was actually going to come do a seminar in Vegas um, with a gentleman, with a gentleman, um, Sal, um, you what, know, what? tactics, who you follow What's the on name? Instagram? He's a lovely guy. He's an ex. He's a business. Edo um, Tactics. I have to look at that. Instagram is Edo Tactics. I know. I know. Edo Tactics. Um, Sal, uh, very yeah, nice guy. Do. I'll send you. A, I'll send you his, his link. Um, uh, okay. Uh, I think he's part of Funker Tactical. I think he's part of Funker Tactical, perhaps, but. Um, uh, and I had other seminars and seminars, you know, uh, in Europe as well. But that's my plan. That's my mission there, Mike, is to get out there and actually share it. Because obviously I've done seminars for a long time before this, uh, obviously not for the last two years. Um, I've got a seminar in Sydney at the end of uh, March. But that's my goal is to get out and, and actually touch people, interact with people, share the knowledge, but also share the passion. And that's, there's no other better way than touching people and actually being in people's presence. Every, everything for me, Mike, is energy. Right. Everything's energy. I don't care what anyone says, it's energy. Once you're in people's presence and they can feel you and you can, you can uh, you know, touch them and show them stuff and, and just give them the passion. I love it. That, that's, that's going to happen. And I have a lot of other goals for, for this, but, yeah, seminars, workshops, that's my plan. I've got a guy in the States actually who wants to do wants to host me so i'll keep you yeah posted please, with that. please do because i'd love to train with you and then i'll take you out to train. dinner with us, you know we'll go out have dinner um so you kind of covered my last question is how things are progressing with you i, I love that you're doing some uh, some cross collaboration with other martial artists and self-defense experts out there that's and and traveling that's really cool that helps your base out there uh where you're from at perth um the, I want to leave it with this with people listening. James is, when I met you years ago, and I never knew you before, I heard about you and I heard about your schools and all that. And then when you walked in, they're like, oh, there's the guy from Australia. There's James. Da, da, da. When you and I got to train together and we felt the energy, but it seems like we have that similar enthusiastic enthusiasm, the, the, the positive chi, the energy, I can see it coming up. I don't want to sound corny, but us martial artists, uh, us martial artists get it. You, you have just that get bro. It. I'm going to leave it in slang term. You have that bro vibe where when I looked at you the first time, I said, that's a dude I can roll with. That's a dude I can hang with. And then when I interacted with you and then you and I were speaking, I uh, I was like, yep, I'm spot on this guy. You know, you and I, after, oh, after all these years, we have a pretty good read on people. So 
Um, sometimes we get jobbed over, but we have a pretty good read on people, at least over time. So, uh, yeah, it was uh, for people that if you have a chance for those out there to interact with James, please do it. He's an awesome human being, great instructor, knows his stuff. He's extremely well versed. And uh, I, that would be awesome to have you if I could see you come on over to the States. And if, even if you're in Vegas or somewhere not too far from us, I'll drive up and check you out. That would be cool. Hey, that'd be and then the feelings mutual, man. I felt exactly the same, and I, yeah. I'm on the exact same wavelength as you. I, I get it. Everything's energy. It doesn't sound corny because that's it's life. It is. You, you can't deny it. And um, yeah, you feel you feel that when you're on the mats with people. And like you said, I think we've got a good read on people. I can pretty much tell people when they walk in the door. They they might be smiling, right. they might feel whatever, but they're vibrating something different. Right. So I suppose. That's yeah, that's why we use the people like this with people very close. So it is an honor, mate. It's an honor, and uh, you're a gentleman, and I really appreciate your time to have me on here. And uh, maybe we can do it again in the future, and we can chat, get in depth into some details and some things. Absolutely. But, no, we'll uh, definitely do a follow up. That'd be great. So pleasure. I'll leave it at this. How can people, whether they're in Australia or they're visiting your, your area, how can they get a hold of you? Do you, you want to leave a, um, a website, a number? Beautiful, yep. So there's a when for the global website it's sustainablejujitsu.com.au, w.sustainablejujitsu.com.au. On Instagram, I have two handles I have uh, Professor James Woodfield Jones and I have a Sustainable Jiu Jitsu, it's the same, same. I set up the two of them. Um, I have a Facebook account, James Woodfield Jones. And if you are in Australia, uh, my mobile number, I'm not worried about putting it out. It's all good. It's not hidden anyway. Zero four zero three eight five nine five five zero. You can contact me, message me direct, or just get onto uh, Instagram and and send me a message, and I'll get back to you asap. And yeah, like I said, my mission is, mate. I want to interact with as many people as I can to help them, help them become better martial artists and aware of the self defense and the art side of it, and um, make them happy people so that they can go and achieve all their goals. And be better humans, whether it's through the martial arts, that's going to be a vehicle that's going to push you, but it, whether it's your career, your family, anything, make you happy. Awesome. You and, and for and those that are thinking, wait a minute, life. he's all the way in Australia. James is very responsive. I, I am 16 hours behind James Vapor Trail. They're 16 hours ahead of us time wise. It's Wednesday morning, his time now coming up. What is that? Uh, what is that? Nine o'clock your time, uh, Wednesday morning. Yeah, nine o'clock, nine o four your time, zero nine o four your time, Wednesday morning. It is Tuesday evening here, seventeen o four. That's twenty four hour time or five o four. So, but my point is, people get a hold of him. He's very responsive. As soon as he wakes up, he is on it. He's moving and he's hustling and all in a positive way. So, James, hey, I really appreciate it, brother. Thank you so much. Outstanding. That was an hour and it felt like twenty minutes. So, uh, thank you again. It's an honor. My pleasure. Thank you so much, Mike. You look after yourself, mate. Oh, likewise. Keep positive, Amen. Mate. Take care. We'll see, Bye. we'll see each other soon. Thanks, sir. Bye-bye.